So in this video, we're going to look at wall mounting this TV. Now this TV is currently attached to my old wall mount, which is a bit wobbly as you can see from this angle. It's as wobbly as my son's front tooth. Now the reason is that when I actually got the original stand, that was for a 40 inch TV. And now I've upgraded that to a 50 inch one and I've been thinking of replacing it. Now Mounting Dream contacted me and asked me if I could do a review on the product. So let's see how it actually looks. Within the box, you got a whole lot of accessories. You got the actual stand along with all the brackets and the anchor bolts and everything. You even got the screws, the washers, the actual coach bolt, wall plugs, and a whole lot of TV screws which you could use for multiple TV models. The instruction manual which comes with the package is absolutely brilliant. It's got a whole lot of diagrams and it explains what you need to do. Now, this is the actual plate which gets attached to the wall and it's got multiple points where you could attach their coach screws. They recommend to use six, so that's what I'm going to do. Now with this template which they have provided, you also got a bubble which you could attach on the center of it. So it makes drilling ever so easy, which I'll show you further down the video. Now, the only thing is I wish this bubble was actually pre-attached on this template so that it removes any human error. And now let's look at how all these comes together. So these two rods which you see are the stuff on which the TV actually rests on. The spiller with the C groove on it is actually attached onto the TV. The front part latches onto the rod and the bottom part gets screwed in. And this is an aerial view of it. And now you got to attach this bit onto the back of the TV and for that you got a whole set of screws. So I found the one which matches my TV, put the washer in and I tighten it up. Just make sure you use only a screwdriver while tightening this up. The last thing you want to do is just blow in through your TV screen. I did the same on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. The holes which you see on the wall are actually the one from my old stand which you can see right here and you can see it's too thin actually and the new one is actually spread across and with six coach screws and being a bit more wider it should give you a very good grip. And next I attach the template onto the wall with some masking tape. And I made sure it's equidistant from either side of the gap and just double check to make sure it's level again. Next, I mark the positions where the screws will be drilled in and using a smaller drill driver, I just drew in pilot holes. For the actual holes, I'll be using my SDS drill. The size for this coach screw and the raw plug is size 10, so that's what I'm going to use. Now here's a handy tip which you may probably already know which is just taking a masking tape on an envelope and then using that to collect the dust. With that I proceeded to drill all the six holes. Not sure if it's luck or skill but all the holes came in perfectly at the designated points. So I'm going to use a supplied wall plug along with these coach screws and washers and we'll fix the actual frame on the wall. For tightening the screws, I used a ratchet spanner and that made this job way, way easy. Now, a couple of points to note at this time is this particular nut which you see over here. It takes an allen key and that's used to tilt the frame forwards or backwards. So if you want a viewing angle facing downwards, you unscrew it and just move it down. Now talking about this allen key, 
there's even a space on this frame where you can store it for future use. So if you want to change the angle on a later date, you know where your Allen key is. Next, let's fit the supporting rods. So the way how it works is you got a left hand side and a right hand side. They join together in the middle and you got the screws to tighten it up on the frame. And the instruction manual actually recommends you to do a stress test at this point in time. It also comes with this face plate which you could put on it to hide the screws. And it's also got the end cap for the left hand side and the right hand side. I quickly just made sure that it's free to move and to wriggle around. And the next step is to take this TV, use that point and latch it onto this TV frame. Once the top part has hooked in, the next part is to just latch in the bottom bit and just screw it in tight. And now a few things to note is that if your TV is still a bit wobbly, in spite of making sure that the bracket is level, there are four adjustment screws over here. With that, you get a range of around minus five to around 10 degrees, which is plenty enough to level it. Mine wasn't, and I had tightened it up to make it level. Now again, for the tilt mechanism as I explained earlier, there's another screw over here which you could use to tilt it either backwards or forwards. And with that, all that's left is to connect up all the wiring and make sure that the TV works again. Alexa, turn on the TV. And now talking about the viewing angle, if you're sitting dead straight, the correct position is to just make sure it tilts a little bit forward and you're done. If at all you want to push the TV forward, you could do that with the civil mechanism. And if you're sitting on the left hand side or the right hand side, again, you have the options to tilt the TV to that side so that you're still viewing the TV dead on straight. Overall, it's a pretty good TV stand. I know I got it for free, but I was on the lookout for a new TV stand to replace my old wobbly one. And this does the job perfectly well. If you are interested, I'll leave a link below to the UK website. You could have a look or you could compare something else. And with that, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next one. Bye.